My name's Sarah Dunn. My name's Colin Miles. And, and I, I was, was in the, the 2015 Board Academy. Academy. Yeah, Craig showed up to my school and gave an assembly. So they didn't even, I don't think they even introduced him. So he just kind of went on stage and it was, and it is weird because um, as although we hadn't been given any information, we could immediately tell that it's not a normal assembly. Um, and everyone was quiet for, I don't know how long he presented, probably 45 minutes, but everyone was dead silent the whole time. Actually, I didn't, I didn't see Craig present for a while after I had I had signed up I think I, I had been one we me Morgan and Carla as a trio we had been one of the last few people to actually sign up quite late into the process and it was Nikki do you remember Nikki calling the coordinator Nikki she had came into uh, she came into my assembly at St Aidan's High and she had kind of introduced it and the image I had in my head of <laughs> what we were what the plan was was so different from the reality it's quite funny I can't describe it I just remember thinking when I came back I was like god what I thought we were going to be doing was so different but I remember being very intrigued by it and again I've all, I always wonder this I don't know what possessed me to sign up because I had virtually no confidence in myself so I don't know what possessed me to actually say yep yeah, I'll, I'll sign up for that but I remember something something stuck with me about what she said and I decided to sign up for it, but I hadn't saw Craig present for a good while um, after I had signed up. After that initial assembly, um, Craig left a sign sheet in the back of the hall um, and everybody rushed to sign it. Because it was like, I mean, the format of the presentation was like, uh, here's all this horrendous stuff I've done. Here, look at my feet. They're all in blisters. Here's all these stories about starving myself and all this stuff. Who wants to go? And everybody signed up. And uh, and after I kind of ran to the back and signed up, I saw Craig standing off the stage at the front of the assembly hall and I went and spoke to him. And all I said was, that sounds really scary. And, and I think that's why I got in. Do you remember what he said to you when you said that? He said, it's not scary at all because um, it's in your control what happens ah good answer there's nothing there <laughs> that you don't, you, know, that you just manage it mm -hmm. um, yeah and but the reason i went up i was just drawn to him i had to i had to find out more i had to get a little bit more information craig's got that way about him doesn't he like the way yes. he speaks the way he composes himself you just kind of want to you want to, you know he's lived, you know, you just know he's lived. you kind of want to go and explore that. You know you. You've always got this feeling like he's not telling you something. That's a... Exactly. <laughs> I need to stop this out. <laughs> From what I remember, I would say withdrawn is probably one of the best words that I can use to describe it. I was never, um, I wouldn't say I was quiet, but I just wouldn't apply myself from complete lack of, I don't know, feeling adequate, I think. I think a lot of the time I was kind of just going through school and doing the bare minimum to get from, from day to day and from class to class. And before I, I did, I felt I felt a lot of the kind of pressure from society or just from the people around me to, you know, be making social connections and to be doing a certain, you know, kind of to be achieving a certain level in school. And it just was never for me. I, was, I never had that mindset. So before... I really struggled to cope with myself a lot. I wasn't really sure of myself and I didn't know how to apply what I had to offer, probably because I didn't know what I had to offer. Withdrawn is a really good word. That's that's the word I use as well. Like, um, I think a lot of us from the team had had difficult experiences or were facing difficult experiences. And there's lots of ways that kids can react to those experiences, right? Some kids lash out, some kids freak out, and a lot of kids withdraw. Um, and that, you know, it's a, what do you call that, maladaptive mechanism, right? It's, it works, it, do, it serves a purpose, but the purpose that it serves as a kid, it, it stifles you as a young adult and as an adult in the wider world. To withdraw like that is not how you, you tend to get things done. And it's not how you tend to live a fulfilling life Definitely. as an adult. So being not pulled out of that but being encouraged out of that and shown a way out of that withdrawal was really valuable for me. So I remember feeling quite awkward just because it was new people and yeah. you know there was and kind of anxieties were heightened. <laughs> again and part of the reason we were selected right is because we weren't 
social butterflies. <laughs> you get ten of us together, um, and we weren't everyone all of a sudden shaking each other's hands and nice to meet you. <laughs> it really helped though because when when we did get together, Craig had already pre-prepared, you know, activities to get us to bond and to interact and get to know each other, and we did we did develop uh, comfort with each other eventually. But in that initial kind of introduction to that there was quite a lot of tension and anxiety because it was all new <laughs> you're right you're right that building the team started right away yeah definitely mm -hmm. so we had an after school club um so it was a wide variety of things like we running and um kind of hit cardio and some just kind of some fun things really yeah. i remember Sometimes. a few games of basketball here and there as well which were yeah. really we kind of spiced up a bit but yeah, I remember Craig had us doing, um, I think it was like Colin says, the hip workouts. And that was what really challenged me the most was, you know, kind of been, been um, stuck into, through into that situation and have having no background of activity myself. But uh, yeah, I remember the hip workouts and then we did, we did, we did the bleak test as well a few times when we kind of did the running back and forth bleak test. And yeah, we were doing, we were doing some team team building exercises as well, I'm sure, with blindfolds at one point. Um, uh, they brought in some Royal Marines PTIs, physical training instructors. So they did. Some team building exercises. So they did. Yeah. Tire Dragon, that, that was the most fun for me because that, that felt like I was preparing for something. Yeah, I agree with that. I think the reason why I really enjoyed the Tire Dragon as well is it was, it was more towards the end of the process and it kind of the idea of doing that before would have terrified me but then once we'd kind of you know Craig built us up for it he was like okay let's test your endurance let's see how far you've come so then it became a positive challenge that we had to undertake so that's I really liked that about the tyre pulling was that it was out of my comfort zone but at this point I was more open to that you know what I mean yeah and having having heard all the stories of Craig at the South Pole and all the stuff he did to prepare for that um, all that was going through my mind at that point was like yeah this is the good stuff this is how you get to be <laughs> like that you know this is what you have to do. Yeah. And, uh, for, for me, um, I enjoyed the beach, but there was one day me and, uh, it was me, Morgan and Carla, these were two other girls from my school. We had went with Craig and I don't remember the place. I can't remember, Craig will be able to tell you the name of it. I can't remember the name of it, but it was covered in snow. It had been really, really snowy that day. And the scenery was just stunning. It was gorgeous. Um, we were dragging the tires through snow and it was just white. And that, just really that day really sticks out in my mind I still remember the beach day but that snowy day really really stuck out in my mind I can't remember where it was though but that was definitely my favorite training spot yeah those um those training days were some of the first days that I spent just outdoors mm -hmm. um like the kind of thing that, that I've you know I've got more experience of that kind of stuff now but the whole idea of kind of pack your sandwiches and go and spend the whole day out and, and uh we were watching birds and robins nesting in trees where we're eating our sandwiches and kind of throwing scraps of bread crumbs to the birds and that really stands out to me as like the outdoors which was alien to me you know mm -hmm. I don't think I really I don't think you really can anticipate you know just how grueling that process is until you're until you're in it but because we'd already tasted a wee bit of what it was going to be like you were able to kind of say okay well I'm I'm familiar with this in some sense, but I no, I didn't I didn't realise just how just you know how intense that was going to be until I was actually on the skis in Greenland. Yeah. I mean looking looking back at the training, I think they did a really good job of preparing us in terms of the ethos and the attitude to have. Um, because there is no preparing for the experience itself. Um, so that's all you can do. Like you introduce a bit of hardship, but you're not going to simulate exactly what you'd find in Greenland because that's why you go to Greenland. Um, I can remember like hill walking on the selection weekend, um, and none of us having much experience hill walking and, and getting up to the tops of these hills and coming back at the end of the day, and my foot, my, both my feet were just uh, in bits, uh, and like blisters on both my heels and all this stuff. And I remember thinking. I could have had 13 more days of that if, if this was Greenland right now. Um, this is enormous. And, and realising that, and oh, I'm in it now, like, and I'm committed, and it's happening. So I'm just going to have to prepare for that. And um, was a big step for me. I remember thinking that, like, oh, this is this is going to happen. It's going to hurt. But it's, it's, I'm still going to do it, and it's still going to be worth it. 
I totally agree with that though. The the selection weekend was just blister central for me, and I was like, I'm not going to survive a fortnight in Greenland. But you know, competes they helped. <laughs> One little moment for me that stands out is just the getting off the plane in Greenland at Kildersuk. Um because we had we went via Iceland. So we're already way out of our element abroad and you get to Iceland and we got there on a really grey, rainy day. And Iceland is a grey country with grey soil. <laughs> um, so it's just miserable. And I got off the plane and I was like, ah, oh, like this is it. Because mm, when we arrived in Greenland in Kulasuk, I couldn't see. It was so bright. It was white out. Yep. And all of a sudden, now we're here. You get there and the air smells different and like cold like I'd never felt and uh, weird noises and sled dogs at the airport presumably <laughs> picking people up um interesting taxi service <laughs> blew us away and, and blew me away and that was when it that was the moment where I realized where I was and what things were going to be like <sighs> I just, just want to uh, discuss that with you for a second. I've not spoken about that with anyone, but the whiteness was a totally different, like the brightness, it was a totally different kind of bright, wasn't it? Like when you step when you stepped out of the airport, it was like you needed, I don't know, I felt like I needed sunglasses because it was just this whole yeah. other intensity of white all around you. Yeah, I've never actually discussed that with anyone, but that's so true. Um, In the mountains think- as well, you need like the really high def proper SPF sunglasses because it's unbearable. Definitely. And the cold as well, you were right. But that <laughs> brightness was something else. But um, one of the most kind of profound moments for me was when I remember we had got, I think it was the third day, and we had been climbing this quite high hill with the skis. And it was when we summited and I just got up the top and it was kind of this downward valley and I just remember looking at it and seeing this huge expanse of ice, it was the huge ice cap and going into the valley and I'm looking to the left of me and I'm looking to the right of me and there's just these huge mountains that are like near enough they look as if they're scraping off the sky and I thought I feel so tiny you know it just I realized how small I was compared to this whole big world and it was just this like revelationary moment where I was like wow that's amazing that I've been I've been shielded you know I've kind of sheltered myself from this and this is what's this is what's out there and the very same thing happened when the night that we saw the the northern lights I looked up at the sky and it was really like seeing magic it was like a wee splash of magic that you just don't I'd never experienced and you know for, for years when I watched Disney that was the last time I think I'd really <laughs> experienced magic but this was real life like right in front of you true authentic magic and um it just lit me up it totally lit me up i just i felt alive i remember feeling alive and it's a bit i know it's a bit um kind of dramatic but i think a lot of my life i did just feel a bit dull a bit kind of dead inside and i just remember those two specific moments lit some kind of fire in me and that's what again just started this whole new course of thinking this whole new perspective but those two moments really stick out for me. Those those two, I know exactly what ones you're talking about. I can picture <laughs> the hill. I can picture yeah. the, the landscape. Um, I remember all of us sitting and having Scran at the top of that hill. And, at, at lunch, you're right. Yeah. Um, and that night where we saw the Northern Lights is, again, it's clear as day. I remember everyone waking up. I remember kicking people awake. I remember dragging Holly out of her tent. <laughs> <laughs> Um, all this stuff and you're right it's like um, you realise that you've sort of been living inside the wire um, and when you when you see a sky that doesn't look like the sky that you're used to you realise how big the world is and, and, and how small a part of it you've been occupying and the very next thought was like What's, what else is there you know this is, this is Absolutely. I had no idea this was here what else do I have no idea about mm-hmm. yeah really really nice film and what what i find really nice about this though is that as much as you know we're, we're all kind of we're all doing our own thing now we're all taking off and shaping our own lives and sculpting ourselves but i can tell that story and colin knows the emotion that i he knows the specific emotion that i'm experiencing because all of us experienced it together and that's what i think is amazing that as much as we're all kind of off doing our own thing and leading our own lives, we're all completely linked through those 14 days. Well, actually it was longer than that. The whole, the whole experience 
being out there and doing that has linked us all for life really we'll all understand that emotion those feelings and those experiences so I, that's was something I find really special about the whole thing a lot of the stuff I learned and a lot of the experiences that I've had I've used since then in my life now um and I, I've been at uni for four years I'm finishing up in the next few weeks and I was studying I signed up to study English with education and I had been doing it in about maybe two and a half three years in I realized that it it wasn't really something that I wasn't sure that it was really where my kind of passions lay and at that point I thought to myself you know what I want to finish this I've started it so I channeled that kind of resilience to just keep pushing through it and complete it um but I'm actually I'm thinking about joining the police I'm going to do the special constables which is the kind of voluntary program and see if it's something I would like to do but one thing the Polar Academy has really taught me is the confidence that I developed gave me this security to explore myself and explore my passions and feel you know secure enough to do that by having that self-belief so this year I plan to just do as much as I can in terms of experience and really finding out where my strengths really are um, and seeing where I would kind of fit into the world of work so I, I, you know I think if I hadn't had the experience with the Polar Academy I might not have had the same the same comfort in myself to be able to go out and branch out and, and do that so that's what I'm hoping to do this year. It's early days yet but two days ago I got confirmation that I am medically eligible to enter the Royal Marines. <gasps> Brilliant. So um, hopefully I'll know in the next month and possibly I'll be in training by October. Oh, that's fantastic. How are you feeling about it? I'm buzzed. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited. I've got, like I said, I've got this medical uh, in like three weeks, um, just a face-to-face with the doctor. And if I don't get turned away there, then I should be all good. You'll smash this. You'll absolutely smash that. You'll, yeah. the- you'll blow them at the I've park. I've had long enough to train for it because I've been wanting to do it for five years. Um, so <laughs> we'll, we'll see and is that so good as well because your experience with the Polar Academy is so relevant you know the, that's that's absolutely brilliant congratulations thank you I didn't uh, having uh, consumed a lot of kind of Royal Marines material at this point don't realise how much of Craig's stuff is Royal Marines stuff mm-hmm. um, it, a lot of it is, is like it's the attitude is, is the same it's the same attitude it's amazing though because I think he was I think he was um I think he was training us and sculpting us to have that attitude you know to have that kind of resilient mindset and that's what I really appreciated about the training and the trip as well was that it was teaching you to be self-disciplined in that way just the way that a Royal Marine is obviously not to the same extent but it's a similar kind of uh, it's a similar kind of ballpark in it it's a similar similar experience I mean it's it's a high performance team working in a difficult environment um, mm-hmm. So those attitudes obviously carry over. Like they develop strategies to deal with that. They develop strategies to help to help people um, deal with that hardship and to work together. Um, so it makes sense that a lot of those strategies carried over to the board. Um, and like immediately after school, because again I, I went to the board academy and when I was 17, um, I went straight to university more or less. And uh, I was really lucky that in at that stage in my life, I knew more or less what I wanted to do, or I had an idea of what I wanted to do, what I wanted to study and focus on, and I was really engaged in it. Um, and as my degree went on, and as I kind of learned more and more, I realised that I had other interests elsewhere, and I wouldn't have known about those interests without the Polar Academy, and I wouldn't have known that I enjoyed exercise, I wouldn't have known that I enjoyed the outdoors, and I certainly wouldn't have had the courage um, and the confidence to explore those areas as career opportunities to see that there is work there, there's work anywhere if you go looking for it, that you can indulge these passions and you can find a way to, to make it your livelihood, um, which is hopefully leading me where I am. Um, it's, it was, it was, there was never any doubt of like, it'll, it'll work out, it'll, it'll happen. You've already done the most ridiculous thing you could imagine. <laughs> so like making a living as a stand-up paddleboard instructor all of a sudden doesn't seem like the most improbable thing you can think of. Um, then. Yeah. I want to explore the kind of passions that I'm experiencing at the moment, but I'm totally open to 
finding new ones. In the last few years, I have discovered a lot of things about me that I didn't know. I mean, I'm just when Colin mentioned paddleboarding, actually, I've just purchased my own. But um, <laughs> I tried that recently and discovered that I just loved it. So I've got my own. I'm ready to go up to Loch Lomond when I finish my dissertation and get out and do it. Um, I used to teach that. <laughs> you taught that? <laughs> I had no idea you taught. Well, you'll need to. Have you got a paddleboard? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you get one, I'll hit you up and we yeah, can yeah. Up <laughs> You can teach me the ways. Um, I'll buy one if you're at the